Joining us now is Dr. Aditi Narukar. She's a physician at Harvard Medical School. Doctor, always good to have you with us. So right now, more than 60 percent of children who are eligible for the vaccine still have not received it. So what does the timeline look like for kids and parents who want to be vaccinated before the new school year? That is a great question, Joe, and so timely. Typically, we suggest a five week timeline. We need about 21 days between the two doses of the vaccine. And then after the second dose, you are not fully protected until you are two weeks after that second dose. So a total of five weeks, which means that if parents vaccinate their children sometime in July, they will be protected by the first day of school in September. And that is coming quick for a lot Mm -hmm. of schools around the country. Now, federal health officials say now is not the time to consider a different type of shot, a booster shot. Deputy director of the CDC says a third dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines could come with stronger side effects, especially since there were higher rates of side effects involving the second dose that so many people experience. So what do we know about the impact of booster shots right now and what kind of side effects could come with that? You know, Joe, boosters are what everyone is talking about right now in light of the Pfizer news and the CDC FDA joint statement. As you said, we do not need boosters now. Whenever we're thinking about a new medical intervention, we think about risk versus benefit. And that's a really important calculation. We know that there's tons of benefits to having a vaccine and potentially a booster down the road. With the risks, as you said, often we see more side effects with the second shot than the first. And we're anticipating that there may be more side effects with the third shot, the booster, compared to the second. But in many cases, these side effects are mild and self-limited. And when we do the risk-benefit calculation, we may see that the benefit of a booster down the road may be much more than the risk. Well, we have you. I want to talk about Missouri. It is a COVID hotspot right now, and it's starting to spill out to other states. Here's what a Kansas doctor told MSNBC yesterday. We have taken some transfers from those hard hit areas of Missouri, like Springfield, Missouri, as well. Uh, But overall, the numbers in our hospitals over the past week to 10 days have been increasing with those acute infections. And I should add the majority, 75 to 80 percent of those people that are coming to the hospital are unvaccinated. So there you hear it. 75 to 80 percent of those patients are unvaccinated. What do you think needs to happen in areas like Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas also comes to mind right now to try and prevent more surges? How do you reach the unvaccinated there? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, Joe. You know, we are seeing in Kansas City itself, the metro area just yesterday, 396 cases of COVID across the country. 99% of those in the hospital with COVID are unvaccinated. We're also seeing a 99% number of deaths from COVID in the unvaccinated. So in terms of containment, that is the most important thing when we're dealing with surges. Containment is the first measure, masking, social distancing, and then of course, vaccinations. Vaccination is a suit of armor when it comes to the Delta variant, as we are seeing. Like that imagery, a suit of armor. All right, Dr. Mm -hmm. Narukar, as always, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your expertise. Thanks, Joe.